Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for July 22nd of 22. Seems like a special day today for some reason, the 22nd. All right, so here we go. Um, we don't have any questions from the internet this morning, so I will... Sorry, I'm just a little distracted and behind this morning. Went out for a bike ride today. Beautiful day out. All right. So um, let's see. Let's go ahead and create this wonderful container of space here with everybody. So if we will... Close your eyes if you wish. We'll go into the heart space. Putting your attention to the physical heart, finding your light. And just imagining going heart to heart with the earth, connecting with that light of the earth and breathing that in. It just amplifies your light within you. Taking in that deep breath. Next, we connect to your light source soul creator god central sun you as creator allowing in your light to just flow into the here now in that third breath we connect creation which is you and the earth So that energy is running between you as creator and that of the earth and you are right here and now. So good to see everybody here this morning. Lots of great folks on. Hey, Leon, good to see you this morning. I'm sure it's like middle of the night where you're at. In the hot and steamy North Carolina coast. Oh my goodness. Yeah, in Texas, Colorado, and the sunny Isle of Wight, UK. Hey, thank you guys for all being here and sharing your locations because it's always cool to see. Leon, you're at 1 a.m. there. <laughs> hey, Renard. Um, all right. So I guess um, I know nothing. So if you guys have some questions, please drop it over here in the questions tab. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you're welcome to sign up to come here live. Um, just go to twistedsage.com, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, so anyway, um, I guess we can do some announcements then. Um, let's see, I'm sure most of you guys read you know, the blog from July 12th, uh, which was when all this new energy anchored in and everything. Um, I know a lot of people in our circles, a lot of people who have the tools, um, you know, the wisdom tools, the alchemist sets, things like that. Um, we're going through some things that I heard and they were very similar to some of the things that the rest of us were going through. And everybody that I know that talked to me about it shifted right at that time when this new energy came through um you know to me it was just, it just opened up everything um just a huge realization within my being of really truly um how huge and interconnected each soul spark truly is um to kind of share with you a little bit about that whole story, um, you know, it was back in April 5th, I believe, when we first started to bring in that energy of, um, pardon me, let me mute here really quick. Um, we were... was us in the here now moment so you know the picture that i get is the human standing here on the earth the human in the here now moment you go into the heart space you just intend to breathe in all of your light bringing in everything that you are so that you are that central 
space where all of the attention and focus of your soul is right here and now. So humans standing here in the right here and now moment within the heart. And then there's that star, which is the earth. Um, you know, that, that star is the heart of the earth. It is, it's, it's like the soul of the earth, let's say, um, you know, kind of like your star is, you know, that's your light. Then we have the earth's light. And then of course we have your light only, you know, you as creator, um, source. And so there's that star of you as source. There's that star of the earth. And then there's the star of you as the human in the here now moment. So this new energy was simply that more tangibly of you grounded in with the earth and connected with creation or you. And so a cool realization that just came through with this whole thing that we did on the 12th was so we've been doing all this clearing work and we've been doing this clearing work for lifetimes here on the earth, but there's so much more that was coming up. I mean, things that we could not perceive as the human, but you know, uh, or at least we could not perceive where this is all coming from. Um, it's just outside of our understanding, but we know that there was all this stuff that was coming and over the past couple of years, we've seen this a lot where, where there's things that we clear for ourselves or for others that are not related to the human. Um, so there was this concept, you know, that came to me about how, if we are in this here now moment, we're that little star of the human and we're grounded into, you know, our soul, but we're also grounded into that star of the earth. What about every other place that we are in creation with? So think about this, that the earth and the human are in co-creation. We have this beautiful, beautiful planet, this matrix that we have a co-creation with, with the earth. And then all of the lifetimes, all of the experience that the earth helps hold and co-create. And so when we do the Trinity breath and we connect with the earth, with ourselves, and we bring it all together, it's beautiful, powerful for everything that you are on this planet and ever have been. But what about all these other spaces and places that we're doing the work for and that come in and affect us? So basically what the whole epiphany was with this, with anchoring in this new energies is we have that earth star, but then that earth star is an interconnected to all the other planets star systems, solar systems, galaxies, central suns, all of those places like earth that are in co-creation with the beings that are connected with there. So basically this earth star, then there's always been that connection that goes to all of these other co-creative spaces, planets, star systems, all of that. So this new energy is connecting us not only with the earth and everything that we are here, but it is connecting us to the true multidimensional aspect of who we are within this universe, which is so huge. So anyway, that's the woo woo moment for, for this new energy is that it's, um, it's so huge. It is so huge on what it helps to to bring in everything that you are your light into the right now um so anyway yeah that's kind of the woo-woo side of the new energy but really then and here's the cool thing too about this new energy um is is that if you notice we we just recently listed you know a tensor coil um we took the golden fire coil too, and we just changed it to a tensor coil pendant with infinity. Basically, as we move forward, we're starting to really try to simplify, to take the woo woo out of things and to simplify everything because, um, I don't know. <laughs> I really want to get this t-shirt <laughs> from this bike company that says, new age hippy dippy bullshit 
because there's so much of that out there. And um, I really want to make sure that we're not out there in that circus because we really want this to be anchored in, to hit home, to, to be accessible to the human and not all the woo woo stuff. So anyway, as we go forward and we create new tools, they're simply going to be called a tensor ring. Um, you know, the tensor tools, we're not going to get into all the airy fairy names because we want to keep things simple. We'll still have, um, hmm, with that said, once this little pendant comes out, the alchemist pendant, yeah, that's right. We're still going to call it the Alchemist um, Taurus, this little pendant here. And of course, this one here, I just have um, run through on cords without the bail. But of course, the new ones that we've been working on for, oh gosh, years, year and a half on this particular one, it has the bail on it. And those ones will probably be released here uh, early this next week. We still have to do some readings on them and such. Um but anyway, otherwise, most of the new tools are just going to be called tensor tools versus the, the very specifics. We'll still be creating all of the older tools, you know, like the harmony, the harmonizer, the chalice, the golden fire, the regeneration, all of those. We'll, we'll still keep those going. Um, but really, this new energy is something that I feel is going to resonate with anybody, no matter where they're at on the spectrum, because right now we have all the different tools and I'm just going to use this ladder variation for the, the different fields of the tools. Not that one is necessarily a lower vibration or frequency than another. Yeah, kind of. So, but basically if somebody resonates only with like the golden fire, um, before they would come in and they would find, okay, there's the golden fire tool. I'm going to go there. But I'm hoping and intending that this new energy, that basically when you come in, wherever you resonate at is where the tool is going to open up, whether it's the harmony, the golden fire, the regeneration, the chalice, whatever the energy is, is what is going to be right there and available. And so then as the person is attracted to that energy, they step in and then everything starts to happen. Um, what starts to happen is the amassing of consciousness. So I'm right now too, we're working on getting prepared for teaching again. Um, and it's not going to be the old stuff, which is why too, uh, we, I just put on the website, uh, there was the transcending the matrix, um, video that we had that I was selling. And it, it's on there for free now um, that anybody can watch it, download it. Um, you can go to YouTube also to watch it. But um, basically all of that was the, the, that point of, of that old energy into the new energy. So that was kind of that, that paradigm shift. We were right in the middle of it. Well, I was right in the middle of that paradigm shift of, of the old, you know, light warrior stuff. And that workshop was right there at that paradigm shift because, you know, at that time I was talking about, well, you know, here's all the old stuff, but we're moving into the new. What the new paradigm work is that I would like to facilitate is basically holding space and convincing the mind to allow. And um, because these new spaces that we work with, with that wisdom field, you know, the wisdom wand in, in that field, is so powerful. Um, but basically what's the paradigm that we're moving into is about amassing consciousness. So what that means is that all these experiences that you've had here on earth, everywhere else right now, as we can come into this zero point space of the soul, we become that magnet that keeps bringing in more of who we are but is also a transformative space that takes all of that stuff and turns it into wisdom. As I have said, the deeper, the darker, the dive you go into when you are incarnate, the more light and wisdom you elicit from that experience. 
So that's what we're doing right now is we are receiving all of that light information and wisdom from all that we are. Then what do you do with that? You surrender and allow. And that is when this new creation takes place. So anyway, that's kind of the premise and basis of, of what the, the new year is going to bring for, for teaching and facilitating, um, which I'm kind of happy because I wasn't sure what the heck I was going to do for a while <laughs> because reinventing, you know, I had to totally, totally surrender and let go of identity. Um, holy crap. That was one of the bigger ones that was going on through, through May and June was totally releasing identity. Um, and then at that time, I didn't know who or what I was or what I was going to do or what was up with the tools. And so really happy that the shift also occurred because of um, what's going on with the new tools. Okay. Anyway, I will stop here chatting and um, we will jump in here. Oh, let's see. So Carla had a question regarding the opening meditation. As we breathe in our light and our connection to the earth, into what should we breathe out? Oh, I've been breathing out into every cell of my body for healing and restoration. Is that correct? That's absolutely perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Um, you know, because this process truly is your own. Just keep it simple. Don't make things complicated. Um, you know, so if you're breathing out and you're just breathing that energy into your cells, that's perfect. Um, you know, just don't go into details of, okay, going into each, you know, um, because you want to keep it simple um, and, and not be too distracted. So two for me, when I see the breathing out, um, I guess to me, it's just, it, it's just that flow. So as we breathe in from the earth, that energy comes up through us and that comes up to creation to you. And as we breathe in that energy of creation that comes down and that goes into the earth. So we become like that, that energy pump, that, uh, that facilitator, that, that big straw, the hollow bone, as a shaman would say that you are just, um, that space for that creation of heaven and earth. And so, um, that's kind of what I do when I breathe out is it just, I just kind of visualize that extending farther and just be in that column. Um, but yeah, please do make any of these your own, as long as you keep it simple. Um, all right. So we'll jump over here to questions. So if you have a question, please drop it here in the question tab. Um, and Leon, so yeah, Leon, you said that uh, you noticed when that new energy did come in and, and shifted things. Um, so with this new energy, it's like it permeated everything. I mean, even like I was looking at some of the, the harmony rings, you know, from years ago, and they're even shifting, you know, in this, in this newer energy. Um, So I don't know. Uh, hopefully I said everything here about the, the new energy update. And you're welcome to ask some more questions here about that. Uh, Nika, will there be some kind of the silver copper generator bracelets available soon or on the prototype page? Oh, shoot. So you must mean something like this one. This is a copper and a silver. Um, this generator bracelet in copper is just released on the TensorField generator bracelets. It's a heavier duty one, um, but we don't have it in the silver and copper. We only made, you know, we made a limited run of these, um, but we are, you know, people have been asking about these generators and silver. So um, we would be happy to make some, we just, you know, silver's a little spendy, so, if you are interested, just kind of let us know. Um, and that's something that we might be able to work in on creating a, a silver generator or two for, for anybody. So just because I'm not sure on the sizing, so we don't want to just get in and make a bunch of stock because like I say, silver is kind of expensive. So, 
Um, Bernard, my new energy coil is out for delivery. Ah, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, I love this thing. I have a friend who's having issues connecting and maintaining the connection with her higher self. I may buy one for her too. Can you go into how to use the coil for that connection? Um, certainly. So these, the, the new coils, the tensor coils are, and again, I'm just using it as a pendant, but people were wanting these to make the, um, the Slim's Rainmaker, which you just basically take a trio, you take four coils, you stick it through, and then you put a clear quartz crystal sphere or a tensor field generator in the center. You lay it on the ground and put your intentions into it uh, for working with the weather. And so these coils, um, I've, always, I've always loved these coils. They're, you know, they're versatile. They're kind of like a little workhorse. My good buddy, Mark Peebler, Dr. Dream is coming here today. Um, Dr. Dream and Stephanie are actually here and hanging out and he has some cool uh, some cool walking sticks that we're going to insert these coils into which i'm excited about too um but the coils for working with yourself you know you can just wear the coil on a lanyard passively and it's going to do great things but i tell you for for your purpose here in art if she just sits with the coil or whoever sits with the coil um it just basically helps to create that field to create that space it has that movement of that torus and when you sit there and you're just holding it up near your heart and you're just sitting in that space um it's going to do so much wonderful lining balancing and just releasing clearing connecting um and of course if if anybody who is working with the tools and the coil and if you're looking for connection just do that trinity breath um you could get into it a little bit more and go back to like that december 5th webinar i think it was where we do that zero point in the soul and everything um that just gets in a little deeper but really for simplicity taking the trinity breath you can use that coil just to hold space and see what happens there um and hopefully that's you know all that she needs is to <sighs> release a couple blockages <sighs> which are releasing already just by witnessing so um so yeah it doesn't nothing has to be hard at all uh the earth star you mentioned is it similar similar to it connected to the earth star chakra in the bottom of the feet in the human and you know and i am not sure about that earth star and the earth star chakra of the human i don't think it is but it could be um the earth star that basically that i'm speaking of is is the heart the heart of gaia um the crystal sun within the earth um gosh we made a giant gaia sphere out of the harmony uh, my first time out to Mary Hardy's several years ago and that whole drive, that's all I could see behind me. This is giant sun in the back of the vehicle. And it was the earth star. The first time that we'd ever seen earth as a sun, as a star um, in that, you know, to us, we just see that as the heart of the earth, uh, the, the soul, that, that, that zero point space of the earth. Um, so it could be the same as that chakra that you have below the feet too. Um, but I, you know, and I'm pretty sure they're all connected. I just think that that chakra, that earth star chakra is, you know, just a little smidge of, of that entire heart of Gaia. Um, I don't know. Leon, I was hoping you could, could give us a background on the starburst in the workshop you did with Bill Reed. Personally, I've been very drawn to work with the Untalk and large starburst. Um, so gosh, Bill Reed was, he, he used to teach a class gravitobiology. Um, Bill was actually, it was Bill and Slim Sperling and a couple other guys who 
discovered the first tensor rings. Now, you know, of course, Slim is the one that is known for the tensor rings, but he had a lot of friends and a lot of help, and Bill Reed was one of the big ones. So Bill, um, actually, so then there was another one of our friends, Simon Balaboa. Hey, Simon, if you ever watch this, he's down in Colorado. Now, he is the one who actually uh, found the math and everything on the starburst. Um, so, and, um, so it's actually Simon who came up with the design, um, and used those cubic measures and everything else because they fit into his mathematical equations and his, you know, and, and he intuited and not only did, did he do the studying, but he was also, he received a lot of information too. And so, you know, Simon talked about how that starburst design, um, you know, it was on, gosh, I think he was one that was talking about it being on the chest plate of Hercules and all this other stuff. Um, basically that it, it had, gosh, you'd have to actually look at the starburst page to find out some of them, some of that information. Cause I don't remember all the details, but basically the starburst is, um, was the precursor to the Untok, the key, which is the Ankh of the now time, the Untok key pendant. Um, you know, just a little pendant. We used to make the larger starburst. Now, the starburst and everything that we're talking about are built out of straight lines. So they are straight line cubit measures, kind of like what we would use for our brass rods and wands that are cut to a very specific measure. Now, when Bill first made this starburst design, basically, um, within the, that metal it has a flow of energetics so with those starbursts basically you have to find which way the energy flows in this wire you cut it to the sacred measure you bring all of them together and these eight different um tines come in and meet in the center and they all draw the energy in to the center um so basically with with the straight line cubit measures they there's not really a safety mechanism on them unlike a tensor ring a tensor ring um it always harmonizes fields you can never put ill intent things like that the straight line cubit measures are a little different um and i'm not going to go into a lot of the details on that because we could talk for days on on building and stuff like that but um basically with the the starburst design and the un talk um talk the key well gosh i don't even know what to say on that leon like i say man there's there's a lot of information on the website about it and i'm gosh i'm not even going to try to recall it um but the starburst and the key pendant are pretty phenomenal um basically the legs in our pyramids are part of that whole thing um because they are all connected to the golden fire and light wands the golden fire and light rods and even in our wisdom wands, we have a straight line cubit measure there, which is also a part of the anchoring in of, of other energetics as well. Sorry, that was not a very good answer to that entire question there. <laughs> so anyway, Sheena, hello, I was wondering what sort of results are being seen with the horse harmonizer tensor ring. Well, uh, certainly. So we do have a friend in, um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, who does rescue horses now she sees the energy signature of a horse and so as they bring in these abused horses and they see this really spiky energy signature with them well when they put that horse harmonizer ring over the head and it sits right over that heart chakra it is allowing the horse to release the the um the charge to the emotions so it releases the emotional charge of the memories it's not like it just clears the memories of the abuse out no but it clears all of the emotional debris of those memories out and so then once that horse sits there for just a few moments um because horses don't hold on to their crap like humans do they it releases easy and so once that horse releases easy then it's it that signature just it's it's like a a calm energy signature is how she describes this now is we have not had a whole lot of feedback and i wish we would um we actually just sent out gosh i think like 15 rings here at an event we did 
a few months ago and curious to see you know what their results are we do not have enough feedback on that horse harmonizer ring um so i hope to start pushing for some of that feedback uh let's see question will the slims weather maker remove chemtrails too so the the weather maker it only has it goes out for gosh i'm trying to remember what the field of influence was it's not that far on that rainmaker. I think it's only like a quarter or a half mile out. I don't, oh gosh, I should have to look at the, again at the website. Um, but it doesn't have a huge area of influence. Um, so, but yes, it would totally get rid of chemtrails because chemtrails are just a part of our creation. Um, you know, because they've told the story a lot that in the beginning, we saw that there was not chemtrails. It was only a local reality. Somebody's like, oh, chemtrails, there's chemtrails. And somebody else is like, oh, hey, chemtrails. Yeah, we got chemtrails too. And then it became something that was in mass consciousness. And mass consciousness is the creation of reality. So at one time, chemtrails did not exist. And now they do not in my reality i never see chemtrails no matter where i go um so yes it can certainly help to shift that reality and the more of us who can step out of the fighting the dark god damn you light warriors that's what i was for 10 years that's where i resigned at and that's where this whole shift has taken me is out of being a light warrior a light worker is somebody who works with their light, their soul, surrenders, does not go in and fight dark and have judgment against the dark. So um, anyway, part of the dissolution of chemtrails is the changing of your reality and becoming a master of creation. Um, Let's see. Divinity. Ah, <laughs> hey there. Would the would the coil that was just released have the same energetic properties as the quantum heart coil? Um, yes. So basically, the quantum heart coils are, to me, they're very. Uh, I don't want to use the word confined, but they're very <laughs> or restrictive. God, confined and restrictive come to mind, but they're they're. They're like a little safety space. I mean, they're, they're something that if you're living in the city and you're just all discombobulated, God, you might want a quantum heart coil just to keep you in this space to where you can function and start to expand. The coils, though, these tensor coils are carrying that same zero point space of the soul. Um, you know, it's, it's a similar to the wisdom wand, but it's more expansive. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a more flow to it. Um, so the coils to me are more expansive and more of a flow than the quantum heart coils, which are again, more of, it's almost like a, a little protector bubble. Um, and we really, you know, it's great as we transition from being discombobulated and, you know, at Feel like we're at the whim of all energy in the world that you know it's all working against us and once you can step into there and you're in that safe space and you start to realize that you know everything is your energy and it's there to serve you then you can step out into a more expansive space um so the quantum heart coils are still great for the people who need that transformation that transition spot but i would recommend the coils, the tensor coils, as something that's just more open and flowing. Uh, how's the new tensor coil different from the quantum heart pendant wisdom one? Oh, cool. You, you guys are on the same page asking that question. So yeah, the, you know, and the coils, again, they're just holding that space. Um, you can send energy with that. I mean, because if you can see and feel this this field that comes from the coil you can imagine that field being anywhere you know i just 
still love my wisdom wand and this is still one of my favorite tools of all time is the wisdom wands um but the coils are great for just holding that expansive space uh ethan does the quantum heart coil pendant have the new energies the new energy of the four inch tensor coil oh so yes when when this energetics got anchored in um earlier this in june um was it june god i don't even remember maybe it was july july 11th or 12th um all of the wisdom tools shifted into this new energy as well as all of the alchemist trios now your single alchemist ring isn't going to you know carry that but when you have the trio together of course that's what creates the wisdom field is having the alchemist trio together that wisdom field we can put into a wisdom ring but still the trio is phenomenal because there's just different energetics you can use there um you know for specific things but all of your alchemist sets and all of your wisdom rings and wisdom tools now carry this new energy um and that's really where we've seen a lot of people have those shifts here that we were talking about that i you know heard is on that same day that i and brenda had our shifts um because it's like as soon as i was put in the tools it seems like a lot of other people they just everything shifted for them too um you know because basically with the tools or with that new energy where i was at was i was in a week or two of just anxiety and anger and everything else and could not function and and that's just how i react when there's a bunch of discordant energy in my field it just irritates the hell out of me and so i'm now able to step into other people's fields and start working with people again without being irritated by the energy of the field um and so once all that once that new energy came in all of that just left i mean for me i saw all of these cords it was like within me was just this deep dark well or this dungeon and deep down in there was just all of that stuff and a lot of that energy wasn't even mine it was just the cords that were connected to all of the aspects that were coming in and so the reason that we weren't able to clear these cords is because they were connected to other planetary star systems you know they were connected to those other co-creative spaces huge 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 on what this is allowing us to release because we are releasing energies that aren't ours that come from all these other places And thinking about how, so we've been focused on that negative stuff. Oh, that negative stuff. And it comes in and affects me. Think about how much beautiful wisdom and light we are amassing with all of that stuff. It's, it's phenomenal. You guys, um, this is huge. And this is why this is huge throughout all of creation. And this is why here on the earth, it is such a big deal of what the human is doing because this is the focal point of of our existence right now and i don't know sorry i'll go quit chatting here about hairy fairy woo woo stuff all right you guys uh so leon yep you notice that the harmony rings feel different too um oh let's see so so you're talking about um with with doing uh with having an organic farm and everything and now how you're having some issues with neighbors and such um so in, in asking on on what energy device or tool would help with that situation <clears throat> well really there's there's a couple of things that i could suggest uh one of them would be you know you could use the quantum grid points and place those in each of the corners of your property 
And, you know, and that would be a really good way to begin to hold that space and just to start to create that entire sacred space there. Because once you start filling in that sacred space and you start to um, anchor in columns of light, you start to invite in all of those plant and uh, the plant and earth divas and elementals and, and the spirits of the you know of, of the land and the plants and everything and you're creating that sacred space and you're just bringing in more light and more consciousness and you're anchoring columns of light in there and you're putting your intentions in there for okay here's the thing with the new paradigm too and this new energies is we cannot go in and fight anything so when you're setting the space and holding the intentions there you're not doing it to change your neighbors or to all of that stuff um basically you know your focus and intent is on the beauty of your creation and as the beauty of your creation and all of that light and all of that support comes in everything else disappears so then it's not just you trying to change the opinion of somebody or anything like that you are bringing in all of that light all of that support all of that beauty and just allow it to be there and allow them to be there with their own opinions and things and just don't worry about them because they come in with a concept of hey we're going to shut you down and hey we don't like this and then you subscribe to that and you are a co-creator of that concept so let it go say sorry your concept has no power and then you just stay centered aligned in your creation of the beauty and it will shift um uh let's see i was wondering if i'm able to use my wisdom wand to upgrade my older generators and rings to the new energy <sighs> yes totally so take your wisdom wand if you wish to change any of the old energies let's say you have a golden fire generator that's been sitting there and like yeah you know it's okay but you know whatever it's just kind of sitting there bring all of your tools out grab your wisdom wand your wisdom rings do the meditation you don't have to have the wisdom tools and just bring all that into the field and it starts to shift it so um you know all it takes is that intention and your attention onto there um and that's something i'll probably do sometime here is do a little workshop just to help hold space for that but um you know just don't get into your head about it you your soul knows your intention heimdall the, the 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 holder of the etheric templates he knows the intention so you just step in there in the heart and ask to shift your tools and done oh let's see where are we at here just reading comments hey samson see you soon <clears throat> all right i think we got some questions here uh, victoria speaking of clearing cords from other planes how does this occur is it going to happen by using the tools which now carry the new energy or is it just happening spontaneously so most of that work will just occur automatically on its own being in the field and you knowing and realizing that that is something that's going to occur it's like you kind of make a choice so if there are things that are not moving and releasing it's because there was a choice to hold that there or it is still serving you somehow even this energy that just it pisses you off and it causes issues and oh my god why is that even here you know either you're still choosing to live in the drama and everything else that that elicits 
or else it is still there serving you because everything is your energy and everything is here to serve you. Whether it's something that you asked for, you made the choice, and so now it is here doing its thing, or else your soul, your light knows that this is what you need so that this situation comes in. Maybe it's something that you just can, maybe it's something that can be released simple and easily. Everything really is. So if you have that situation, just go into the heart, take the breath, come into that zero point space where you have all of your light and then you put your attention onto it. You shine your light, you put your divine awareness, however you see and say that, you just simply put your awareness, your attention, your light there. You allow that to be in existence and you allow that to be uncreated. So you allow it to be and you allow it to no longer be all in the same breath, all in the same, um, you know, just allow it to be because you don't want to fight it. And when you allow things to be, when you have your divine awareness on there, then they release because we're powerful creators. Um, so that's kind of with the clearing the cords too. Um, you know, you don't have to necessarily, you know, see things and witness them. You can just have that, that base assumption or, you know, that base thought of, you know, you're in the heart space and like, okay, maybe I have some cords. Well, I choose to release all those cords. Um, take a breath and allow. And I feel a lot of you shifting that just right there. Simple, simple, easy. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Leon, why is it that the Gaia spheres have less of an expansive field than the traditional four rings generators? This has never made sense to me as the Gaia has two additional rings. You know, it's... Um, that's really a good question. The Gaia spheres, you know, the tensor field generators are made to be that sunshine. The Gaia spheres are basically a replication of the energy of the earth. And it's not, um, I have no answer for that question, Leon. Um, you know, the most of the things with the tensor tools defy logic. It's a lot of people who, and eh, never mind like to try to make logic sense out of them and then they make logic and it's not real or true. You see that all the time on the tensor tool pages, but I'm not the tensor police, so I will just stay out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I cannot answer that question about the Gaia sphere other than it has a whole different purpose and meaning and, and field and space to it. It's not meant to be the, the sun transmitter. Um, not sure. Hey, there I am. The energies of the new pendant you're wearing is very enchanting. How big of a field does it create? Does it also help in the ascension and self-realization? Um, let's see. Just making sure. So the new pendant as in the coil or the new pendant as in the Taurus. Um, basically, the same energies. They just move and flow and connect and do different things, but it's the same basic field, that wisdom field, that new energy field. And um, how big of a field does it create? Uh, the the coil pendant, the field is about, um, oh cool, thank you for uh, specifying on that Taurus pendant. Uh, but the field of the coil, it's, it's about an eight foot field. Um, but the pendant, uh, the, the Taurus, the Taurus is not like um, an environmental tool that's supposed to expand out into the field. The Taurus pendant is working more with you and your field and then that interconnecting and in, in everything that happens within there. Now, the Taurus pendants are called the Taurus because it creates that toroidal field, the tube Taurus, which is the basic energy flow of everything in creation from a molecule to a planet to a galaxy to a universe there's just it's just a toroidal field it's it's a flow of energy well i don't know about a universe but anyway so that flow of energy in itself is huge on 
helping with connecting more to the physical, to the physical cells, as well as just bringing things more. It's a more of a powerful field and it's a natural field and it's a harmonizing field. So it harmonizes everything else because um, it is things that are in disharmony that cause all the issues. So electromagnetic fields, a, a disharmonious electromagnetic field is what causes issues. It's not because it's an electromagnetic field because electromagnetic fields are part of all physical creation. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's not the, you know, it's how that field is smooth and flowing. So the Taurus pendant, um, we have not done the reading on it, so I can't go too much into detail on specifics other than the energy that it's holding. Yes, it's very much for helping in ascension and self-realization because what that is, is it is bringing in your consciousness and your light, aka soul, in a very tangible way. So... Yes, that in itself is realization and ascension, is bringing in your consciousness and releasing. Um, well, it's not even about releasing. It's about um, turning energy into new. And that's part two of what this new energy is, is that as the earth and your soul are coming in, what the earth is not able to help pull out of your field, your soul light comes in and changes that dense energy into something new. So when we've been working here recently and we find like, let's say you get some sticky energy and it sticks to you and it's like, oh crap, man, my foot hurts. And you, and you just run some energy and it moves. Okay, then you know it's energy if, if energy moves or if a pain moves in your body. So instead of going in and trying to release it and everything else, we're just like, hey, Let's change that little dense pocket of energy into something new and something that will serve us. So that's what I've been doing with any little sticky energy that comes in my field is I simply have my awareness on there, my divine attention, which is just your heart shining your light. And I just simply say, okay, we're going to change that into something new. Because that's what's happening anyway. But it, we just take that conscious, you know, we we convince the mind that, hey, we're going to allow that dense energy. We're going to allow our soul, our light to come in. And we're going to change that into new. So really, that is kind of the theme of this new paradigm is new energy. I mean, it, it's it's things turning to new. I mean, I have a friend who talked to a tree. I probably told you guys this one a while back. Friend talked to a tree. The tree is like, you know. I don't want to be a tree anymore. The consciousness of the tree it left the tree and it wants to go be something different. Maybe a bee or a butterfly or a human or a cow. Who knows? Um, things are just changing into new. And so that's part of, um, you know, the work that we're doing now. It's not releasing, it's alchemizing. So we are alchemizing energy now. As you know, before we'd always been releasing, rebalancing. Now we're alchemizing. So dense energy comes in your field. You release it. You rebalance. That's what healing has always been: is releasing and rebalancing. Now we're stepping in and we're changing it to new. Um. Anyway, sorry. Concepts. <sighs> Quite the concepts. Uh, let's see. I watched the Transcending the Matrix Beyond Duality videos. Um, cut off abruptly on part three. Oh, so if uh, check it out, the the part four, uh, yeah, it cut off a part three right when we were getting into light anchoring. And so go to light anchoring 3.0, and that is the, the fourth segment of the video is basically just going to that light anchoring 3.0 video on YouTube because um, yeah, we had issues with the camera that day. So anyway, uh, where's the new energy coil on the website? Um, let's see. We have Twisted Sage Tensor Coil. So when you go to Twisted Sage, so there's the Tensor Coil there, just on the Tensor Coil page. 
but there is also let's see twisted sage golden fire coil hey yay somebody put up a link to the tensor coil and then the the golden fire coil the tensor coil pendant this is the one where we now have the silver yay silver so the golden fire coil no longer exists now we have a tensor coil pendant with infinity and it does have the golden fire in it but it also has everything in it and so that's the thing too is all the new energies um you know within there it it's just expanded our toolbox we didn't get rid of the golden fire and the harmony and the regeneration and all that stuff all that stuff is still in in the rings in the new energy stuff in the wisdom stuff the alchemist it's 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 all still in there so um the golden fire coil still contains all the properties that it did before but it contains everything else as well um so yes oh yay thank you very much for sharing the links here appreciate that all right so um sometime soon we will we're going to do some meditation videos and such um gosh there's just so much that's getting ready to release now i mean to, to let go to move now that we finally got this new energy anchored in and um so there's going to probably be a lot of changes that are going to occur here over the next year in twisted sage but we're we're pretty excited about that so um anyway i suppose i will let you guys go because i don't have nothing else cool to jabber about and um looks like you guys have got the questions in for the day so thank you guys um try and think if there's anything else uh the generator bracelets the new the new coil pendants and the coil pendant in silver um and then next week will be the taurus pendant um gosh i was thinking there was some other oh yeah we do have some other cool new tool things coming but i will wait until next week to give you guys a heads up on something really fun we've been working on for a little bit so it's going to be a do-it-yourself kit anyway thank you guys very much for being here and support um gosh we appreciate all of you guys very much and uh thank you for being here we will see you next time